Now we go a step up in the hierarchy of our network. We go into the network subsystem. In this central part of our mobile network, we have to place mobile switching centers and other components. And these mobile switching centers now connect the base station controllers to each other. They also aggregate base station controllers so that the traffic for the mobile calls, for data, can be routed in the, tra in the network. And routing then means either direct routing within the mobile service provider network, so from one mobile station, which is connected to a base transceiver station, via different base station controllers, for example, and a mobile switching center, to another mobile switching center, and then down to, again, a base station controller and to a base transceiver station. Or, in the second case, you would set up a call to the outside network, to the PSTN, and then you would go via the base station controller, mobile switching center into the PSTN. And one important task for the mobile switching center is to do the call control. So for the call control, you need the registration of a mobile station. You need to know as a mobile switching center that there is a certain mobile station or there are many mobile stations actually in your area where you somehow manage your base station controllers. And this means as a mobile switching center, you have to know which users, which mobile stations are in your area, are connected to one of your base transceiver stations. Then you also have to take care about the availability. So you need to know when a caller is available, when a mobile station is available, or when it is not available in your network. And if it is available, it is if it is passive, for example, and it needs to connect to a call which is coming from outside, then you need to do the call routing. The call routing to initially make the connection setup, and then after the connection setup, you maintain the connection to properly transmit all the data which are required for the call realization. And last but not least, the mobile switching center also has to take care about the routing of short messages, which need to be transferred from mo one mobile station to another mobile station. Another service which the mobile switching center has to support is the mobility management. Mobility management is something special in mobile networks because in mobile networks you do not have the physical line like in landline networks. In landline networks you would be able to see a caller and to identify a caller by the physical line which it is using and then you know that a certain call comes from, from a certain participant in a network. In mobile networks, you do not have this line, you do not have this cable connection, and therefore you need to work with authentication. And authentication in our case of the digital communication means that you need to work with keys. You have certain private keys, you have certain uh, keys for signatures, and the mobile switching center basically has to support this authentication so that only the allowed users can access the network and that the mobile switching center then also checks if the user, if the incoming call has certain rights to access services, to use services within the network. And the mobile switching center would then realize that the mobile station can use actually this service. The mobile switching center also has to take care of the location of a mobile station. So mobile stations, as mentioned before, move within the area which is covered by the mobile services provider. And there is the mobile station can connect to different antennas, to different base transceiver stations. And the mobile switching center has to track the location because if a call is incoming from another mobile station or from a PSTN, then the mobile switching center has to identify the right base station controller and the right base, trace, base transceiver station to route 
the traffic to exactly this base transceiver station for the call setup. And therefore, the mobile switching center has to track the location of a mobile station. Movement also means that the mobile station will move through different areas of coverage by different base transceiver stations. And this means handover. This means connection goes over from one base, trace, base transceiver station to another base transceiver station. And the mobile switching center also supports this handover process. Here in this architecture graphic, you see that the MSC is connected to this kind of cloud. The cloud means here in this case the PSTN, the public switched telephone network. And this means actually that the mobile switching center has to take care of the connection to this PSTN and it does it by means of the GSMC. The GSMC is the gateway mobile switching center and gateway in this case means that you have an access point which is to address if you want to make a connection to the public switch telephone network. And this GMSC is used in the case that, for example, a mobile station wants to set up a call into the PSTN. Then first the request is made via the PSC to the MSC. The MSC then will know that the destination of the call is in the PSTN. The MSC will route the call setup information correspondingly to the destination. And then if the call is set up, then the traffic is routed through the gateway MSC into the PSTN. If you see these different connections, for example, from the mobile switching center to the base station controller, and uh, between the mobile switching center also and uh, the mobile switching center also connected to the gateway mobile switching center, then you might ask what uh, about the protocols. Protocols for the communication between all these components are important, of course. And for these protocols, there are certain standardizations available so that it is publicly known how these components communicate. And this means that manufacturers of equipment parts for a mobile network can produce the mobile switching centers, for example, regarding to the standards, regarding to the standardized protocols, such that on the one hand, the connection is easily possible between the components, such that no individual integration has to be done. And on the other hand, exchange of components is easily possible. So that you can also run your network with a mix of different manufacturers, mobile switching centers, for example, from different manufacturers. And therewith, you get also a kind of independence from the manufacturers so that you not rely on only one manufacturer with your network components. So standardized interfaces are important in the entire mobile network. Now, as mentioned, as mentioned before, we have this gateway mobile switching center and we want to look into a little bit more detail of this component. It connects, as mentioned before, the MSC into the PSTN. And actually, each MSC has a connection to this one G MSC, this one gateway MSC, such that this gateway is one single point of failure, so to say, for the connection into the PSTN. Incoming calls from the PSTN into the mobile network go through this gateway mobile switching centers and the same vice versa, outgoing calls from the mobile stations over the PSCs, the MSCs, go via the gateway MSC into the PSTN. And then we also have this other part of the network, which is somehow connected to such a data packet network. Data packet network in this case means that we, for example, have internet traffic and that we use GPRS. 
we want to use, uh, we want to access data services from our mobile station. And we do not co connect into the public switching telephone network, but into this data packet network for getting this internet access. And therefore, we need two different additional components. The first one is the serving GPRS support node. The serving GPRS support node is co-located with the mobile switching center, so very close to this mobile uh, switching center. And it has the task to route the traffic, to route the data traffic from the MSC to the GGSN. So in the case that there is a data connection required from the mobile station to the data packet network, then the traffic, the data packets come in via the BSC, go to the MSC, and in the MSC, the packets are decoded such that it is known that it's not a voice call packet, rather it's a data packet which needs to be transferred to the data packet network, and then the data packet goes via the serving GPRS support node to the gateway GPRS support node in the data packet network. And if there is an answer coming from the data packet network, then this answer comes in via the GGSN, via the gateway GPRS support node into our mobile network. And then there needs to be found the proper MSC, which finally can serve the data to the mobile station to the, into the right location. This GGSN actually is responsible for the management of the connections which carry IP traffic, which carry internet traffic. And therefore, this GGSN assigns an IP address to the mobile station so that the mobile station can be reached from the GGSN at its location. Then the GGSN also maintains a list of the active mobile stations so that the GGSN knows which mobile station is available at the time when uh, data traffic comes in. And finally, if the uh, mobile station is available, then the GGSN routes, as uh, mentioned before, uh, via the mobile switching center into the cell where the mobile station is available. And this also connects with the billing system, so the traffic which goes through this uh, gateway GPRS support node is counted, and the counter traffic is later on built to the user. So this is actually the architecture of the GSM network, a little bit in more detail, a little bit in more detail also regarding to the GPRS, to the service which brings us our data transmission, data transmission for internet services, and there was, you see that the original GSM network, which kind of consists of the connection to the PSDN, the mobile switching centers and the base station controls was enhanced by these additional components, SGSN, GGSN, to realize this data traffic within the mobile network also. And in the later technologies, it is to realize that the data traffic was planned in these other, in these newer technologies from the beginning on, so that you don't have this kind of network in parallel here to realize the data connections for the mobile stations.